Hey, welcome everyone. Today on Skyline Summer Session, we have Thomas Maurer, the Azure Rockstar. Uh, welcome, Thomas. Um, it's good to have you on the show today. Today, you're going to talk about Azure Stack and Azure Arc. Uh, but first, tell us a bit about yourself and your role at Microsoft. Yeah, so thank you, Richard. First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be on this show. Um, so yeah, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate working for Microsoft, and I'm part of the Azure engineering team. So our main missions are basically, if you look at very high level, uh, it's creating content and delivering content around the world, and obviously a lot of on online content these days. Um, and the other thing is working very close with our customers and communities and engineering teams to get feedback and understand um, what is working, what is not working, and deliver that back to our feature teams, right? So we can actually improve uh, our services. Sounds good. So I'm just going to ask you a little question. Uh, Thomas, so Azure Arc was announced around about November the 4th last year, kind of around the Ignite time. It was featured heavily in the keynote at Ignite 2019. For someone who isn't aware of what Azure Arc is, what is Azure Arc addressing? Yeah, so uh, glad you bring this up. Um, Azure Arc, again, was announced at Ignite 2019. And it's basically what, what we are trying to do is we saw the need from our customers and we, um, of hybrid management, right? Uh, we saw, and also Jason Sanders acknowledged that in the keynote itself and said, hey, we think that hybrid is an end state for our customers. It's not just the in-between state until everything is moved to the cloud. We really understand that customers have needs that they can stay, uh, that they also need to run services in their data centers or at their edge locations like branch offices and stores and so on. And so um, we kind of like figured, hey, how can we address this and make the life of engineers easier right of our like uh how can we actually say hey there are so many management tools and we see so many customers managing stuff in azure managing stuff at other cloud providers managing stuff on prem and they all have different tools and different challenges and it stuff obviously as we all know they manage hundreds of applications or even if not thousands of applications and again some of them very modern applications, like uh, containerized applications, PaaS service, and so on. But they're also managing like traditional infrastructure as a service or virtualization workloads or physical servers. Um, then they have a large diversity of hardware and again, locations. They have their own data centers, branch offices, uh, and so on. And again, they're probably also running in multi-cloud. So we were thinking, hey, we have these like cloud native management tools in um, in Azure, right? Uh, which we help to basically manage all your Azure services. Now, why not offer them for all your services, which are also not running in Azure, right? For all your non Azure services. So Azure Arc basically allows you to manage and run Azure services on any infrastructure anywhere. That's basically the high level slogan, what Azure Arc does. So what kind of use cases have you actually seen Azure Arc being used for with your customers? So uh, we talked to a couple of different customers. And again, um, we are like, when we, when we announced Azure Arc, um, I think a lot of people just looked at the different use cases, right? Uh, but it's, it's much, much more than these use cases. And I want to quickly address that as well. Um, Really what we did is we said, hey, we have this thing called Azure Resource Manager to manage all your Azure resources. With Azure Arc, we are extending this for your non-Azure resources. And right now, we are plugging in basically three different things. Uh, we are plugging in servers. These can be virtual machines, physical servers, running on-prem, running at other cloud provider. So you can add these um, to the Azure Resource Manager using Azure Arc. Um, and then the other ones are basically uh, the same thing for Kubernetes clusters, right? We see a lot of uptake in Kubernetes clusters. Um, and again, a lot of them running in Azure, but also a lot of them running on-prem or at other cloud providers. And then the last thing really is about data services. So with the Azure data services where customers said, hey, it's great that we have Azure SQL, um, but we can only run it in Azure. For some workloads, we also need them 
on-prem or at another cloud provider. And that's basically what uh, Azure Data Services, the Azure Data Services part allows you to do. So today we basically have, I would say, um, a couple of different use cases. One of them definitely like doing governance and management from servers and Kubernetes clusters across any infrastructure, like everything outside of Azure, right? That's where Azure R comes into play. And you can basically connect them and then have policies uh, applied to your servers as well as your Kubernetes clusters uh, to make sure that they are configured securely and basically um, compliant with your company policies. The other thing is deploying apps to your Kubernetes clusters, right? Uh, we're using a technology like for like uh, called GitOps to basically allow you, hey, trigger that and say, hey, um, you get like you have a Kubernetes cluster on-prem that should get um, this application from that specific Git uh, repo and deploy it, and you can manage that using Azure Arc. And the last one, as I mentioned, running Azure data services like Azure SQL or Azure Postgres uh, wherever you need it. Right? I think those are really the key. Um, um, the key uh, use cases we offer today. Cool. So being able to see your on-prem services and your Azure Stack VMs, etc., in the portal, that sounds pretty cool to me, to be honest. What's your thoughts on all that? Being able to bring it into the Azure portal itself? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, um, again, what, what I show most of the customers is that even a simple thing, like showing everything uh, in one portal and having everything listed there. Um, it sounds like a small thing, but if you manage a lot of different applications and servers and services uh, in a lot of different locations, it sounds like kind of like a crazy magic, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, we've got Azure Arc and Windows Admin Center. Do you see these two products sort of merging together or one replacing the other? Or what's your thoughts on that? Um, that's an interesting question. I usually get this also a lot with, with like Azure Stack into play. Um, no, I think to be fair, I think those are all very complementary solutions, right? Um, I think Azure Arc is really where, again, where we connect services to Azure, to Azure Resource Manager, and managing like in the same way as we do Azure Resources. Windows Admin Center really enables you to manage like especially windows server management and azure stack hci management and all of that on prem with no connection to the cloud if you don't need it right uh, and it, it it replaces some tools like performance monitor uh, like the, the event manager and stuff like that with a very modern ui and allows you to remote manage these servers so it addresses a little bit like of different different needs that said it obviously is very tight connected to Azure if you want to. So you can go out and say, hey, I want to connect a server to Azure Arc. And then you just go to Windows Admin Center and you can say, hey, join that server to Azure Arc. And a couple of seconds later, that server is actually connected to Azure Arc. And it helps you to onboard other Azure services as well for your on-prem environment or your environment running uh, at another cloud provider. So I really think theirs are all complementary. They're working together depending on where the customer is, right? So if you're managing your Windows servers on-prem and you don't have any tights to it, tights to Azure, then you use Windows Admin Center. You can also use Windows Admin Center to connect different Azure services. And at one point, even connect Azure Arc and then move up and say, hey, I want to not just manage my Azure stuff, but also my on-prem stuff with Azure Resource Manager. Cool. So I believe you've got a demo coming up, but just before that, I was going to ask you one last question. So uh, what would you like to see on Azure Stack from coming across from Azure? What's the kind of next service you'd like to see on Azure Stack? <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a good question. So um, there are a lot of services um, which our customers demand, right, um, or, or wish for that we bring them on Azure Stack so they can run it in their data center. And to be honest, I like to see that we invest more in the container space because I can see that a lot of people out there are probably struggling a little bit by managing their own Kubernetes clusters and having kind of like that solution uh, or making them easier to run Kubernetes um, uh, on Azure Stack. Um, that I think that is where we should invest more. Um, that said, we already have, have Azure Container Azure Service Container available on Azure Stack. Stack. 
So um, it's not that uh, we don't have anything, right? But I, I see that there's people love this and I hope that we see more of that in the future. So I believe you've got a demo for us, is that correct? Yes, so I have a quick demo on uh, Azure Arc um, for servers, how you can actually manage and govern uh, your servers in a hybrid environment. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, so here I'm in the Azure portal. And if I go to all Azure resources, what you can see here, I can see all the different Azure resources. This can be virtual machines, web apps, databases, like even network adapters are like, if you want to, a resource, right? So we have with Azure Resource Manager and the Azure Portal and the CLI and PowerShell, some effective tools to manage these. Now, wouldn't it be great if I would not just see my Azure resources, but also see my on-prem servers, right? And that's one of the use cases we were talking about. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna just select machines here. Oh. Virtual Azure Virtual Machines and Azure Arc Machines. And now what you can see, it lists me the Azure Virtual Machines side by side by my, with my on-prem machines here. You can see I have two file servers, I have an Ubuntu machine uh, and a admin center machine here. And they're running in my data center locations, right? So if I go here, I can even have a look at it. I can see that um, they are basically joined to a resource group and even to a subscription, uh, but they show up here as well. So I can also group them here. So let's group them by type. We can see it a little bit better. So we have here the art machines and the virtual machines. So now I see them in one, one single place. I can now also use, for example, um, filters for like tags because I can tag my resources. So um, let's say I have, for example, a location tag. I can now go and say, hey, I want to show me like all my Azure VMs or my VMs or servers running in the Seattle office and in the Zurich data center. So let's just show me the ones in my Seattle office. And I can filter through that and you can see one of my file servers running in the Seattle office, right? So this is one way where Azure Arc comes into play. It just adds those resources um, to, to the Azure Resource Manager. Now, you tell me, okay, that's great. I can at least see all the resources, but wait, there is obviously way, way more. So one thing I wanna show you is policy. Now in Azure, for those who don't know, we have Azure Policy, and Azure Policy allows, you, allows us basically to configure and manage our Azure environment. And then there's a certain thing called Azure Guest Configuration Policy, which allows you basically to audit and configure um, operating systems for Windows and Linux for your machines running in Azure. Now with Azure Arc, we can extend this to machines outside of Azure, and I'm gonna show you how. So first of all, we would look at, for example, at definitions here. So I can, those definitions are basically rule sets. And now if I'm gonna, add a new initiative here. I can basically say, hey, um, what's the name of that? And then I can go and say, we have some built-in definitions, right? So I want to have like, let's say for password. So we have here, for example, different search results here for, um, or different policy definitions uh, for password security, right? So we can audit Windows and Linux machines to make sure that they are configured in a secure way. Uh, I'm not gonna configure that because I already have done that. So if I go back to my policy view, I wanna now see how is my compliance state, right? How I'm doing. So I can go here and see all my assignments of these policies and you can see here, I have a couple of um, policies which I'm not compliant to. There are some of them which I'm compliant and they work fine. But if I now go one here, which basically checks all my machines for uh, insecure password settings, you can see here, I can go in and I see uh, that I, a couple of them are not compliant and some of them I am compliant with. Now, if I wanna know the resources which are actually not compliant, I just go to not compliant resources. And now you can see here, 
I have my Azure VMs, which are not compliant with that, but also my servers running in my data centers, right, on-prem or at another cloud provider. So you can see here um, that my file servers, for example, I just showed you, they're not compliant with that policy. And now the easiest way to basically change that is, well, there are two ways of basically changing that. I could now go out and see what that policy actually means and then change it manually. But the other thing is I could just quickly go and create a remediation task and then say, hey, please go out and change that for that specific resource, right? So in that case, we would address that server here. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can imagine how easy it would be like to, okay, audit my systems. It doesn't matter where they're running. Um, or then also uh, basically change them, like go to the, the desired state, basically. So the next part of the demo I want to show you quickly, really, really quickly, is about Azure Arc itself. So how did I actually join these servers to our Azure Arc environment? Um, so for that, obviously, I'm looking for Azure Arc, and you can see here the three specific solutions we can do right now. Uh, govern and organize your servers, manage your Kubernetes apps at scale, and run your data services. So they are currently in private preview, as you can see, but the organize and govern server part, um, that's basically in public preview. So you can try this out today. So with that, I'll go to manage servers, and you can see here, those are the servers I already joined. If I want to add a new server, it's pretty simple. I just click on add, and this will go through a wizard, um, which helps me to create a script, which then allows me to install a agent on the machine, and then basically that agent connects up to Azure. So I have two options right now. I can do an interactive script, which then basically allows me uh, or makes that I need to log in on the server itself while I run the script. Or if I do that, obviously, with a couple of more servers, I don't want to log in on all of these. So I can basically create a script and use a service principle name to join all of these. Now, for the demo, we're just going to do the interactive one. And this is basically how, this is how the wizard looks like to, to generate that script, which basically then onboards our server. Um, as Azure, any Azure resource, we need to obviously join that resource to a subscription. We need to join it to a resource group. Uh, and we need to select a location uh, for where this server is going to join. And then we can say, hey, OK, this is now a Linux or Windows machine. I'm on purpose now, let's say it's a Linux machine. Um, and then we have uh, the option to basically configure a proxy if your machine is behind a proxy. You can add some tags, and you can then go out in the last screen. You can basically go download that script or just copy it from here. And you can see here, it basically says, hey, there are three steps. Download the package, download the agent, install the agent, and the last one really registers the server up to Azure. In that moment, a couple of seconds or minutes later, that server will show up here under Azure um, Arc machines. Now, after the server is joined, I can click on one of these, for example. So now you can see here all the machines I have joined using Azure Arc, right? So these are already up here. Um, and you can see here the list of servers I've joined. Now, if you have a look at one of these servers, let's say the WAX01 here, uh, you can see here it looks like an Azure resource, right? You have it's joined to a resource group. Uh, it's based on location. It's added to a subscription. Uh, and you have all that information as you would have for any resource running in Azure um, here as well. You have an activity log, you have um, role-based access control, as well as you can configure tags, right? So you could go into tags and basically say, hey, uh, use the Azure tags, like for example, cost center I had, or whatever you have in your environment, you can now tag your non-Azure resources as well and basically use them for automation or, what, or reporting or whatever you uh, need it for. And then I have here two other things I talked about. One is the policy part. Now, I showed you the policy part over all Azure resources. And if I had enough rights, I could see everything which is going on and see which servers are not compliant compared to which are. Um, now, but as a server admin, if I go in here, I only see the policies for my specific server. So I'm only interested, obviously, in is my server compliant with my company 
regulations, right, or um, policies. And I can see here that I'm compliant with a couple of them, but also here I'm not compliant with the audit VMs with insecure password settings. So if I go into that policy, you can see here again a description on what it is, and then you can see here all the different parts of this policy or initiative, basically, um, which I'm like not compliant and the ones I am compliant. I'm obviously interested in the ones which I'm not compliant, so I could either go out now and fix them manually, um, as I said before, or I can just create a remediation task and basically say, hey, okay, I'm creating a task from here and it's gonna change the setting on that specific resource. Again, this is nothing new. We had uh, Azure policy and Azure guest configuration policy in Azure for a while, but with Azure Arc, we can now then uh, use them for non-Azure resources. If I go back, we can also have a look at logs. And if you're familiar with logs, we have a service called Azure Log Analytics. And Azure Log Analytics is a service which you could use before Arc. Uh, it basically allows you to onboard machines from Azure and for non-Azure uh, machines as well. However, if you have used it before, you know that if you want to give someone access to logs of a specific server, you basically have to give him access to the whole log analytics workspace. And this is obviously not great if like, someone wants to figure out the logs for a specific server and sees everything, right? So with Azure Arc, we're now able to limit that view only for a specific server. So here I can only see the logs for that specific system, and then I can use the keyword query language we are known from Azure Log Analytics, uh, basically to run a query. And if I go here, I have some predefined queries here. This one is to have a look at the update log. So in that case, I see all the updates uh, available on that system, installed on that system, and pending on that system, right? So I can actually go out and check out, hey, what is actually, how is the state of that system, and so on. And obviously, I can create much more uh, queries if I want to, like to figure out different events and security settings and so on. So that is Azure Log Analytics. And I think those are the capabilities we currently have in the server part. So if you manage and govern your servers here, uh, you can do that using Azure Arc for servers. Uh, again, we have similar capabilities in private preview for uh, Kubernetes clusters, as well as the app deployment for Kubernetes clusters, and then again, Azure Data Services. So that was a quick look at Azure Arc for server. I hope that uh, was okay. Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, really good, really good. So we've got a couple of fun questions just to, just to kind of finish off. Um, so tell us about your new uh, AZ update show, if you, if you don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the AC update show is something we created um, as part of our series. So we created a blog series a um, couple of months back called the AC update. And basically what it is, it's every Friday we cover around the, like some of the interesting news uh, happening in the Azure space, right? We realize it's tough to figure out um, like what is actually new with Azure and where do I get all these updates and information? I mean, there are some great blogs out there. There are some, the Azure blogs, you have some news feeds and so on. But we wanted to try creating that blog. And at one point we said, hey, why not create a show out of that? Why not create a live stream um, where we can actually then talk to people as well and interact with them uh, and basically tell them, hey, look, this is what we were excited about this week. How about you? What are you excited about this week? What happened in Azure and in the community? Yeah, re really enjoying the show. It's really good. Um, so a question, fun one from me uh, would be, what's your favorite stack feature and why? <laughs> what's my favorite Azure stack feature and why? Um, mm. To be honest, I'm, I, there are so many great things about Azure stack. <laughs> um, so when we talk about Azure stack, I, I assume we are talking about Azure stack hub. Um, so uh, the main thing about for me is that it, it, it doesn't sound probably too fancy for anyone watching this, like, um, okay, this is, yeah, okay. But for me, really, it is about the, the infrastructure, right? About having that integrated system 
and having that appliance approach where you don't need to go out and patch all the different components of your Azure Stack system or where you need to figure out, okay, do I need to first patch my virtualization nodes? Uh, do I then need to go out and like patch the portal or some application stuff like that? You really have just one update package and you just click on download and install like you would update your phone, right? You just click and it updates all the components of the integrated system. And having worked with other with like companies who built their own private cloud using System Center and Windows Server um, and were running hundreds and if not thousands of systems, um, this is a big change, right? If you have, if you were a, if, if you had the need to go out and manage and update all these systems, that was pretty tough. Um, now with that, you just get this piece of cloud, if you call it that way, um, and get it into your data center, and then you just let it run, and you just you just care about the things you deploy on top of it, right? So that is that is to me, I think one of the the, the biggest uh, uh, game changers there. Okay, last question I think for today, Thomas. Um, what are you looking forward to to most of all uh, post lockdown? Once, once we're all good. <laughs> um, having dinner with friends. I think um, this is this is tough. Like, I mean, I'm used to um, traveling a lot. I'm used to going out with friends and having a nice dinner and talking and do all of that. And I'm also happy, to be honest. I'm a person who is very happy being home. <laughs> so it's not something I don't like. But now after like weeks and weeks and weeks, I'm really happy to see some different faces and enjoy a good good meal together. I think that is that is what we're most looking forward to. Yeah, I can totally totally relate to that. Yeah, definitely. I think we can get one more question in. A very important question. When are you buying Izzy a cat? <laughs> um, I I have some very um nice furniture <laughs> in the flat so not sure about that um to be honest it was also never really a question because we traveled so much right and to quit we can't take the cat with us um but now since we are a little bit more at home we had a little bit of a discussion about it thomas thanks very much for your time it's been a pleasure i hope everyone learned some new things about azure Arc. i certainly did i'm pretty sure richard did as well so definitely Thanks, Thomas. Thank you very much, Gregor. Thank Thanks. you very much, Richard. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you. Oh, you too. Hope to see you Thank soon. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.